I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Window. I cannot believe it. This is the last time we're meeting for our Super Bloom Block of the Month. How exciting! We had had so much fun making blocks together every month. Oh, I cannot tell you how thankful I am that you took the time and came to quilt with me and wanted to do this project. Well, today we're working on a block number nine. Is this block right here. I rotate the quilt. It's This block is from the bottom of the quilt, but I rotate the quilt so that way you can see it. Oh, it is a wonderful little block. It has an Ohio star in the center and it's set in in a sawtooth star with cute little four patches in each corner. Let's go ahead and do this block together. In our sewing basket, I have a pattern and we're gonna follow the directions from the pattern. The pattern also gonna come handy to finish the quilt as we're gonna be sewing our blocks into rows and adding the applique. You can choose from pre-cut blocks or if you have the fabric, you can use the fabrics. All our members of our block of the month are receiving the blocks right now and they're probably super, super excited about it. If you're just joining us in, yes, there's still time. We have few of those kits left and in the kit you will find all the pre-cut blocks, pattern, and you're gonna find background, setting triangles, binding, and applique pieces for this beautiful quilt called Super Bloom that is behind me. If you rather do your own cutting, we do have beautiful bundles from Super Bloom or Fat Aid bundles for someone who just, just want to try our fabric. So visit our website at Laundry Basket Quilts and you can find those beautiful things. In my basket today, I have also included a fresh needle. I'm using Macrotex Needle 70 for the piecing. And later on, when I'm going to be showing you a little bit of applique, I will be uh, talking about the uh, super non-stick needle that it's wonderful for fusible applique and some options for threads but that's later on in just a little bit right now we're just gonna focus on one block i have my pattern in front of me and i'm gonna start by making the little four patches in a corner so for the four patches i need two light squares and i have them i put them right in front of me and you need one light blue and one dark blue, light and dark. So this is how you're going to make your little four patches. And you're gonna start by taking the pieces, putting them right sides together, uh, match those corners beautifully using a quarter inch seam allowance. You're gonna be sewing loose sets of two. And yes, you can be doing chain sewing. That makes everything so much faster and quick. As soon as you finish sewing, you're gonna go ahead, open it up, push the seam allowance towards the dark. And I love to use my little handy pressing tool for that. So I open it up and press it, let's see. Oh, it's hiding right here. Perfect. For a moment, I was stressed out because this is really a nice tool and I love to use it. And I press it right open. Then I'm going to go ahead, put my pieces right sides together. Look how wonderful the seams are locking because the seam allowance is going in the opposite direction. I'm going to take my patchwork pins and pin it right there. And then I'm going to sew it straight down from here. And it is going to look wonderful. Look at this. This one is already finished sewing. Perfect. Open it up. As soon as I open from the back, I'm going to push the seam allowance. So they're spinning in the same direction. As, as I'm doing this, the center opened up really nice. And we have a beautiful center. So it's not bulky when you make your little four patches. And here, my first four patches finish. I'm so excited about it. You're gonna repeat this four times total. So repeat it three more times for four total little four patches 
that gonna go in each corner of your block. As soon as you finish those, set them to the side and let's move on to our next unit for this block. And the next unit is going to be a flying geese unit. And this flying geese unit is going to be right here in the block, see, right there. And I'm going to make mine from two quarter square triangle in pink, two quarter square triangle in dark blue, and one quarter square triangle in a light. And just quickly reviewing, when you cutting pieces, you have to remember that your straight grain is on the outside, so the pieces are not stretching. So it's important to cut these pieces from a square twice diagonally for quarter square triangles. So all the bias edges are staying on the inside of your unit. All right, let's take those and put them right sides together, our quarter square triangle, pink and a blue. Zoom, 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 sew it up. Then go ahead, you take this one, sew it up. Oh, I have some already done. Look at this, looks wonderful. One and next one right here, super. As soon as those are finished, I'm gonna make sure I'm going to push my seam allowance towards the dark, towards the dark blue. All right, finish it up. Now I'm gonna take those unit, this uh, tr uh, quarter square triangle unit and place right over my light flying geese, just like this. Look how I match this point right here. And here I'm overlapping, it's staying a little further, but right here it has to match perfectly. I'm gonna take a pin and pin it right there in the middle as I have this on the table. Be careful, don't pull, don't stretch. So that way your unit looks wonderful. You're gonna start sewing right here, zoom, zoom, zoom. As soon as you finish, you're gonna go ahead, open it up. Let me pull that pin so I can open it up. And then I'm gonna go ahead, take this side, place it right over, sew it, open it up, and I'm gonna have my first flying geese unit done. You're gonna repeat it three more times for four of those, and as soon as you finish, and by the way, all the seam allowances are going towards the light this time, towards the light, and don't forget, trim those little bunny ears, grab your favorite rotary and a ruler, place it right over, Trim, trim, make sure that everything nice and clean and beautiful. You want this unit to look very nice for your block. And like I said, you're going to make four of them total. Great, let's set it to the side. And now it's time for our centerpiece, our beautiful Ohio star. I know you are a pro in making Ohio star stars by now. We have made quite a few of those in our quilt. Right at the beginning, right down here, block number two, we practice quite a few of those. And we're going to make uh, the Ohio star from pink and light quarter square triangle pink and light quarter square triangles, just like this. We have to make four units like this, one, two, three, four, to make one Ohio start block. And we're gonna start by taking our light triangle, placing over our pink and sewing. And we're gonna repeat this over and over because we need quite a few of those and again chain sewing a wonderful wonderful idea to do it look at i have started right here and i use my chain sewing technique i'm going to go ahead clip those apart perfect oh it didn't let's try it again and I'm gonna go ahead, open it up, and I have to tell you, I finger press those. Finger press or use my little tool. I don't use the iron because I am worried about this area stretching it out. Again, I'm gonna open it up, push my seam allowance towards the pink, finger press or use that cute little tool. Look at this, perfect. Now, I did you see what I just did? I had two exact same units, 
and I just rotate them, one of them, and look at now, I can go ahead, place them right sides together, lock my seam right there in the middle, of course, use my beautiful pin to ensure that my seams are matching, I'm going to start sewing right here from the top, straight down, and as soon as I finish sewing, do you see, as soon as I finish sewing, I can go ahead and again, push my seam allowances so they are going right here in the same direction open that cute little center and I have my first little unit just like this I'm gonna place my ruler and I make sure that my 45 degree line matches my seam right there and I'm gonna go ahead and trim it perfectly to have a beautiful two and a half by two and a half quarter square triangle unit. How exciting. I'm going to repeat this process three more times, remember, because I want a total of four little quarter square triangle unit. This unit also is called, called broken glass. How sweet. I once made a whole quilt for one of my books, just making those. It was so much fun. So as soon as you finish it, now you need four of those and you're gonna line them up into the rows, into the rows with a um, light square, light square that is gonna be in the corners. So I have four of the light squares, just like this, look at that. Oh, this is getting so exciting. This is gonna be wonderful and a beautiful red square for the center, done. Next, what we're going to do is create three row. Row number one, two, and three. We're going to place our squares right sides together, sew it with the quarter square triangle unit. This side, sew it. The same thing on this side and the same in this row. Every time you sew, you're gonna push the seam allowance towards the plain square, towards the center, towards the squares right here. And as soon as you finish, you're going to have a beautiful little Ohio star. And I am so excited to show you my Ohio star. How wonderful. What a cute little block. I love this block. It's such a delightful block. And you know, this block for the quilt, I love it. I think it would be great to make a whole quilt just with this block, maybe in your leftover blues for the winter would be perfect. Okay, now it's time to lay out our block number nine. Remember, we have our beautiful flying geese units. We have four of those. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Here, let's clean up the space. So one, two, three, four. Super. Oh, I tell you, this is gonna be beautiful. I keep checking to the original block to make sure that I'm lining everything in the right direction. You don't want to suddenly something to rotate. And notice I'm paying attention to this um, fabric right here. I want that fabric also to go in the right direction. When I planned out my four patches, I made sure I laid all of them out to check that they're gonna go in the same direction because I want that finish to be very nice. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to the direction of your fabric. As soon you have laid out all the pieces, you're gonna go ahead and place it right sides together pin it beautifully, right sides together, pin it, sew it, flip it open. This is row number one. You're gonna do the same thing right here. Pin it, sew it. When you're sewing right here, pay attention. Don't accidentally sew over the top of your flying geese. No, you don't want to do that. You don't want to sacrifice those beautiful points. Row two and row three. And once you have your three rows done, you're gonna sew your rows together and make sure you pin and follow directions in the pattern for pressing and now you just finish your last block, block number nine. I am so proud of you. So, so proud of you. Well, we're not done yet with the quilt. As soon as you finish all your blocks, 
now it's going to be time to put your blocks into the quilt and all the directions are in a pattern but i would love to take one more minute of your time and hopefully you would allow me to help you with just few advice few little things as you making your quilt you finish your blocks you're gonna press beautifully all your blocks. Now it's time to cut your finishing pieces. You're gonna start by cutting your half square triangles right here for your setting star and quarter square triangle for this unit. So this is gonna be a unit that you're going to make. You're gonna make quite a few of those because you have them all over the quilt between your blocks as soon as you finish those units and now don't tell me you just practice how to make flying geese the same technique that we use for this block going to apply for those units right here as soon as you finish those you're gonna put to the side four of them you want to have four of them for the center and you want to add the applicate to the four of those units to make it nice and easy. And with adding that applique, you get to practice your fusible applique. And I wanted to please invite you to watch our video on fusible applique that we have, that it is just wonderful. You're going to find the link below, uh, above, so make sure you click on that and then you can follow that video, how to do fusible applique. As soon as you applique those, uh, four blocks now it's time to lay out all the remaining pieces and we're gonna cut them and lay our pieces and all our blocks and now we're gonna go ahead start sewing all the pieces into rows sew rows together add our outside and a top and a bottom border and as soon as you do that you're gonna go ahead and add the applique on a left, right, bottom, left, and a right corner. And I just want to take a one more second. Your applique comes in a pre-packaged packages. You have your branches, you have all the leaves, and you have all your beautiful berries. When I do fusible applique, I like to use a wonderful threads, and there's all different options. If you do not want to show your stitches invisible, uh, this nylon invisible thread is perfect. If you do want to show your stitches, you would like to use a cotton thread. Also, if you want to uh, hide the stitches, you can use this thread right here that it's from Wonderful that is just wonderful. So I'm going to show you a few options just really quickly, but I really would love you to go visit the video that I specifically did on fusible applique that it gives you a great, great startup. Okay. If you are afraid of applique and you want to hide your stitches, like I said, the first option, nylon invisible thread, or oh, this thread is wonderful. So Invisifil, that is wonderful to hide your stitches. This thread will be on the top. On a bobbin, I would use 2370. I like the little darker color because I want to hide myself behind my applique and I don't want to bring up a light thread from my bobbin. So I'm using a little bit darker thread and either one of these two options, 2370 or this one, 5013, are wonderful options if you would like to use it. Both threads are from Aurofil and you will fill up your bobbin with this thread. On the top, you would use invisible thread this is for the applique that you don't want to show your stitches <clears throat> you will lower the tension remember that and I'm going to use a zigzag and I'm just going around the edges with a zigzag and right here notice on my sample you really cannot see it when I take it to the back now you can see yes I use the zigzag stitch so this is an option number one that you can use it if you do want to show off your stitches using a beautiful color thre colorful thread and on purpose I use the yellow so you can really see the stitches but what I would recommend using one of our pillow talk colors they're beautiful blue beautiful pink perfect matches 
and every time you go around a shape you will be then switching the color so for the branches i would use all the blues for around the berries i would use my pinks and then there is a touch of yellow or you can also use that uh threads right here uh, from wonderful and this one has a wonderful blues and i especially like this variegated pink for all of the pinks and reds so you can use that option too in this case again in a bobbin we have exact same thread this thread 2370 we want to hide that stitch and we're making a small zigzag if you would like to show off a little bit more thread and your skills of stitching using the blanket stitch it would be a wonderful option and you can go around all of the shapes with a beautiful blanket stitch and this is what i have on my quilt a blanket stitch very nice and small and it looks wonderful again for blanket stitch the same color 2370 will be in a bobbin now you're gonna say to me i've never done this i'm afraid of it is the needle gonna be googing out what is gonna happen for me well number one the fusible webbing that we use is steam is seam uh, so please make sure you use steam when you iron your pieces so you get rid of that sticky it's nice to have the little sticky when you're lining all your pieces following the layout because the stay in place they're not floating everywhere so that's nice but with that you must remember to press it enough press it enough don't melt completely that fusible but when you notice that when you're stitching and something is sticking and your needle is building up a little sticky on it that make that is a sign that you have not pressed enough so please press it a little bit more and then try it again i guarantee you will get it right don't worry just be patient also make sure you have a little wipe so you can wipe the needle as you are stitching and another advice for you is use the non-stick needle that also help quite a bit with having a really good experience when you're doing fusible applique now remember if you're using a thicker thread like the weight 50 cotton you need a little thicker needle so you can break that hole to pull the thread through it okay so don't go for too thin of a needle because there is no room to pull the thread only for those invisible threads that are very thin you can go ahead and use a nice thin needle otherwise you need a, a, at least an 80 for that stitching so you have a really good experience all right now if you would like to you can also use just a simple straight stitch just staying one eighth on the inside of your applique stay a straight stitch the edges eventually will fray just tiny bit with time but that's not a problem your pieces will still be secure in place and this applique calls raw edge applique if you fusible raw edge applique if you have put a blanket zigzag stitch on the edges that means that is fusible finish edge applique where you finish the edges with that beautiful thread but enough about applique i'm pretty sure you're going right now to visit our video on fusible applique that would be amazing for you showing you how to use the layout is one of our oldest video and much most watched i hope you enjoy it as soon as you finish your applique on the quilt now it's going to be time to do quilting and you can custom quilt the quilt or you can do what i've done i quilt that edge to edge my quilt and yes i went right over my applique i did not go around it and outline i went right over and enjoyed just beautiful design of just long arm machine quilting and it looks i have low like swirls and low feathers onto it if you want to know which one is it just email us and i'm also going to post that information on our blog and i once again want to thank you so 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 much from the bottom of my heart from laundry basket team and myself we are so thankful that you have chose 
to be with us for the last nine months and create this beautiful super bloom quilt. This was our first block of the month and we could not have done it without you and could not have better time with our wonderful, wonderful customers. So please, sincerely, my thank you to you for doing our block of the month. And I hope you join us for next year for doing our Winter Village Mystery Quilt. We all, uh, our Winter Village Quilt alone, but we also planned a wonderful mystery quilt for you. So join us uh, in for that. And we have another beautiful block of the month coming out. So please visit our website and our blog, and we will be showing you and sharing more information about this new uh, wonderful uh, block of the month. Okay, you wanted to know it's going to be all about baskets. So join us in. We cannot wait to have you. I'm using my seamstress collection for the new block of the month and I hope you join me in and enjoy it this journey again with me. Thank you so much. Happy quilting. Make sure Thumbs up for our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit our website at launcherbasketquilts.com. And I wish you the best holiday and Happy New Year. And thank you so much for quilting with me. Happy quilting! Mm -hmm.